When I told some of my friends that I decided to purchase a Nintendo Switch, they were quite surprised. Cheek and buying a Nintendo Switch, there's no way. And it might seem odd to you too, especially when I tell you some of the things I am not too interested in. For starters, I consider the Switch and Nintendo Switch to be somewhat undesirable. While many of my friends are Nintendo lovers and all own an original Switch, the concept of docking and undocking my console to play on either the TV or in handheld mode seems a bit counterproductive to me. The reason why I do not enjoy the hybrid aspect is that I would much rather play on a specialized system. The original Switch is a console of compromises. While it allows a player to play in both handheld and dock modes, neither experience seems to be truly ideal to me. A big point is ergonomics. While in handheld mode, the original Switch is pretty good, once you dock it, you run into some problems. For one, the Joy-Cons are very small and have been specifically designed to be able to be detached from the system to be used as motion controls or as two separate controllers. While the analog sticks and buttons are switched around on vertically on either side, they are not offset horizontally, making the Joy-Cons very uncomfortable to use when they are put into the controller case, resulting in a rectangular controller that is awkward to hold and which I personally would never even consider to use. There are alternatives to this. For instance, the 8-bit do Bluetooth receiver that enables any controller to be connected to the system. The absolutely amazing 8-bit 2 Pro 2 controller or the Nintendo Switch Pro controller, which in my opinion is a bit overpriced. The entire Nintendo Switch unit is maybe the smallest home console I've ever seen, but the small size comes to an obvious detriment. The console relies on peripherals for my specific use case. Playing online on the home console means for me that connection must be stable, but you cannot just hook up an Ethernet cable as is, you would need to buy a network adapter. One of the Switch's predecessors, the Nintendo Wii, which also was a console with a very small form factor, allowed the player to connect various gamepads natively, which was a great feature for the very dedicated Nintendo fanbase. It is great that the original Switch and the Lite version allow certain functionality if you buy the correct peripheral, but I find it baffling that the console relies on the peripherals for functionality. So the Switch to me personally is somewhat of a sub-ideal console. If I use it as a home console, I am bound to compare it to my favorite console ever made, the PlayStation 3. To me, the Switch would fall short in terms of comfort, the need for extra peripherals, and the lack of some important features that I will get to later. On top of that, I have a general disinterest in the first-party titles. So, what is the point of owning a console for which I don't enjoy the first-party game selection at sports and the gimmicks it puts to the table? Well, luckily the Switch Lite exists. The Nintendo Switch Lite is a budget handheld-only version of the console. Just like the original Switch, it sports the same mobile hardware and offers the same performance a regular undocked Switch can put on the table. The removal of the docking and Joy-Con gimmicks leaves the Switch Lite with a robust chassis and a slim enough form factor. The buttons, D-pad and analog sticks of the console feel incredibly good in my hands. What does not feel that good is a console by itself. The Switch is a beast in regards to mobile gaming, which makes it the biggest handheld console yet. But unlike the PlayStation Portable and PlayStation Vita, the Switch Lite falls behind in terms of basic ergonomics. The button and analog stick layout has not been slightly offset to make holding it more comfortable. And even worse, there are no supports on the back of the console to enable me from holding onto the console with comfort. Neither does the Switch Lite offer a textured surface to prevent the console from slipping out of my hands. The Switch Lite is very slim on its back and without the case I got from the Orsley accessory pack, I bet that I would have dropped the console multiple times already. Now, let's talk screens. Certain other tech reviewers constantly complain about bezels and smaller screens like my favorite tech nerd Linus often does. Also, as much as I appreciate the smaller size of the device as a whole, the downsized screen feels more like a downgrade. 2019 has proven to be the year of high-resolution, bezel-less mobile devices with vibrant, color-accurate displays. And Nintendo seems to have missed every mark here. While I do agree with the color accuracy woes, I am a big supporter of bezels and slightly smaller screens. The resolution of the Switch Lite screen stood the same as the original Switch's screen, but due to the smaller size, games look even sharper than they actually are. I personally did not have any complaints with the color inaccuracies, and I am very content with the fact that the Switch Lite retained touchscreen functionality. 
The screen of a Switch Lite also is a tad bit brighter than the screen of the original Switch. Most importantly, games. So what games am I interested in, you might wonder? Primarily, I bought the Switch for two games in particular, Monster Hunter Rise and Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate. I have been a massive Monster Hunter fan ever since my good friend Frank showed me Monster Hunter Freedom Unite on the PSP. Then I decided to get Bulletstorm for the Switch, simply because I was curious to see how well it was ported to the system. Duke Nukem 3D, Minecraft, Rain World, and finally Animal Crossing came bundled with my system, but I don't like this game since it resembles a EA mobile game just without premium currency. I'm not fronting the game, I just don't really like it. For being a glorified smartphone when it comes to the tech, the Switch has an incredible lineup of games, many of which are third-party and mature titles. The Switch also became surprisingly popular with indie game productions. Some games that previously only came out for the PS Vita, like Gnosia, are now available on the Switch for instance. Other good examples of indie games on the system would be Rain World, Enter the Gungeon, Nuclear Throne and Binding of Isaac. Nintendo repeatedly shot themselves in the foot in the past by focusing on a Nintendo-only audience. Many of their consoles arguably are not even worth getting if you're not a fan of Nintendo's first-party game selection. The Switch's game lineup showcases us that Nintendo might have matured a little bit by including a much broader third-party game selection. From Skyrim to Doom and even Wolfenstein and Bulletstorm, available fully uncensored and adapted as completely as possible, the Switch is a serious contender to other contemporary systems. Most games feel amazing to play on the Nintendo Switch Lite. The biggest surprise for me so far was Bulletstorm, which visually looks rather similar to the PC version, and in terms of performance always stood in the ballpark of uh, 20 to 30 FPS. With games such as Monster Hunter Rise and Duke Nukem 3D, it also is a good idea to enable gyroscopic controls. You heard that right. The Switch Lite retains a gyroscope that can be used to control the in-game camera of specific games. In Duke 3D and other shooter games, the gyroscope is perfect to fine-tune your aim by tilting the console. The battery life of the system is rather good for my use case. Around 4 to 5 hours of continuous play depending on what games you enjoy. So now let us compare the Switch with the handheld console I always wanted, the PlayStation Vita. You might think that this will turn out to be an unfair comparison, but you might be surprised. So, the Switch obviously obliterates the PlayStation Vita in terms of graphics, game ports, network play, and hardware capabilities. The PlayStation Vita has a lower resolution, games have less powerful hardware to play with, and the Vita had gimmicks of its own which weren't always good. Front and back facing cameras, front and back touchscreens, and the capability to connect to the mobile internet. Yet this console feels like a much better companion than the Switch will ever be for you. Completely disregarding homebrew, jailbreaking and emulation, the PSP and the Vita are multimedial portable machines. The Switch is not. The Switch does feature YouTube, Nico Nico and Hulu, but that is about it for multimedia applications. And besides, the YouTube application on the Switch could be better to say the least. You can load video, image and music files onto the PlayStation handhelds and use them as portable multimedia players. Nowadays I would not use my PSP as an MP3 player, but back then I did. Both the Vita and the earlier PlayStation Portable allow customization, multimedial consumption and access to an internet browser. Need a new background image? No need to even turn your computer on, just hop on Google and find yourself the anime girl of your dreams. But PlayStation handhelds did not tell you how they should be used, you could do whatever the hell you wanted with them. The PlayStation Vita became even more open, chatting with your friends over the PlayStation Network remains possible to this day. You can take and send pictures, watch YouTube over the internet browser without much hassle and get this, you can still use the old OG Netflix on your Vita. If you are like me and don't really want to use mobile internet, a PS Vita is a great contender for a mobile companion. Internet isn't everywhere and having some music or video saved for later can be a blessing. Nowadays we have phones which took over this role of a companion device, but a PS Vita might be a great companion if you are still immersed in the PlayStation ecosystem. The PS Vita has remote play functionality when used in conjunction with the PS4. 
there are some issues like control mapping being a bit of a pain and unstable connections due to the weak Wi-Fi chip implemented into the console. But what matters here is that the Vita provided a functioning proof of concept. A heavily requested feature from Switch users also is the implementation of themes and custom background images. The PlayStation Portable is very straightforward in this regard. Just load an image onto the memory card, go to the image gallery and select the image you want to set as a background. Crop it and that's it. The PSP also features themes, while the PlayStation Vita's customization revolves around the usage of a theme. A theme completely alters how your menus look, how it sounds and changing the icons into whatever the theme dictates. The fact that the Nintendo Switch consoles are getting absolutely destroyed in those aspects by a 16-year-old machine is not only mind-boggling, it is a little bit annoying. Imagine grinding for gear in Monster Hunter while watching Breaking Bad on Netflix over picture-in-picture -picture mode. Think about how amazing it would be if you could play your favorite games on the Switch with the soundtrack muted and replacing it with a personalized Spotify playlist that is running in the background. Custom themes, backgrounds, locally saved music, and videos are not only cool, they can also potentially open up a new revenue stream for Nintendo and any other game company to make more money. On Steam, it has become commonplace to purchase soundtrack DLCs. Why would that not be possible on a portable handheld console like the Nintendo Switch? Going online is also something that the Switch is missing. The reason why it is most likely can be traced back to how other consoles were jailbroken. The PlayStation 3 is partly jailbroken thanks to its web browser, for instance. And web browsers can bring a whole bunch of security issues that Nintendo most likely did not want to gamble with. As far as I am aware, there are no software exploits found on the system so far and it must be due to the rigorous enforcement of security guidelines for the console. But to be frank, I would appreciate the Switch more if it put more effort into becoming open, allowing for certain functionality despite the security risks that may arise. A large reason why there is not much of a drive to jailbreak the Xbox Series X, for instance, is because it can do anything the user would want it to do. Play games, watch Netflix, listen to music, and even emulate games and load homebrew. All of that is possible on an unmodified console. And you might only want to jailbreak it if you really wanted to pirate games or try to install Linux on your console or something. But piracy on the Xbox is not really worth it. You could just get a Game Pass. The highest Game Pass tier would cost the subscriber 13 euros a month or 156 euros a year, and it offers the user instant access to an abundance of games with cross-save functionality. Many of those games are not only available on Xbox, but also on PC as well, which is the main reason why I think that the PS5 and Nintendo Switch are sub-ideal companion consoles if you use your PC and home console with each other. Sadly, the PlayStation consoles also lost functionality over time. For instance, the, in my opinion, worst investment you could ever make, the PlayStation 5, does not even allow you to use an internet browser without utilizing exploits. Meanwhile, the Xbox Series X and S allow you to use Microsoft Edge with mouse and keyboard, a fully-fledged desktop browser only really lacking plugin support. Another big point is game preservation. While Microsoft are being incredibly proactive, even allowing Xbox Series X owners to play almost every Xbox game from any console generation, Nintendo stagnated in regards to emulation. The Nintendo Switch, of course, has some problems relating to backwards compatibility, mainly due to its cartridge format. But Nintendo could make things better with emulation. Nintendo Online features a vast library of NES and SNES games, but I would be lying if I said that I would be taking advantage of this game's library. Nintendo could seriously benefit by offering GameCube and Wii games with their Nintendo Online subscription model, but that is just wishful thinking on my part. And this is what is annoying about this little powerful console. It could be so much more than it already is. Being able to play AAA quality games in a complete form is amazing. The sheer amount of console exclusives is tantalizing and the thought of being able to bring your entertainment system everywhere with you seems like one of the best things you could think of. But the incredibly close nature of a Nintendo Switch console lineup, horrible multimedial features, lack of customizability and a missing equivalent to something like a Game Pass makes the Switch way more appealing to just 
bust open and jailbreak. Not only that, but Nintendo created the best handheld gaming platform ever, which is eventually going to be outmatched by regular smartphones. You can already play Call of Duty Mobile, Minecraft and Fortnite on a phone, and getting AAA graphics on a smartphone will most likely be a thing that is going to happen soon. It is happening with cloud gaming, emulators, an abundance of multimedia apps and no need for an online subscription to play games online. A regular smartphone is able to absolutely outclass the Nintendo Switch even in the most basic departments. Despite my laments, for 200 euros this light version of a Nintendo Switch is well worth its money to me. I constantly see myself playing games in bed or even at my desk while chatting to friends with the audio hooked up to my computer. I would just hope that it would be a little bit more open. Due to the lack of multimedia functionality and the lack of an equivalent to a Game Pass and very close nature of a Nintendo Switch OS, I can only really tell any Nintendo fan or people that specifically want to play a certain selection of video games to get this system. Otherwise, you might want to invest in a good smartphone, Bluetooth controller and a remote play streaming service. Or maybe look out for the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck seems to be the best portable console I have ever seen since the PS Vita. It sacrificed some portability for being at the apex of utility. It even allows you to install Windows 10 and use it as a normal computer. Anyways, that was my look into the Nintendo Switch Lite and I hope that you enjoyed this video. Bye bye.